Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Craninger, you have been nominated uh, to lead the agency that is singularly tasked with protecting American consumers from predatory financial practices, from seniors to service members, students to homeowners. We created the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to be an independent cop on the beat for American consumers. When we met, and I appreciate you coming by, you told me that your management experience at OMB has prepared you for this role. So I want to ask you about that, specifically about the administration's response to Puerto Rico. Hurricane Maria tragically killed thousands of people, resulted in the longest blackout in U.S. history, and left Puerto Ricans without access to clean water for weeks. It took FEMA only two weeks to send Texas almost three times the amount of staff that it sent to Puerto Rico more than two months later. Now, I sent you a letter asking for information about your role in Puerto Rico, and I asked for a response by this past Monday. You failed to provide one. As it turns out, I have emails that demonstrate your involvement in the Trump administration's response to Hurricane Maria, although these are not emails that you provided to us. In my office, you told me that you were not only were you involved in the response to Puerto Rico through your oversight of FEMA, Treasury, and HUD, but that you oversaw the development of disaster aid requests to Congress. So let me ask you here, and please provide me some brief responses, because I think factually we probably both know the answers. In the first aid package that Congress passed after Hurricane Maria, most of Puerto Rico's aid came in the form of a community disaster loan that can only be forgiven at the discretion of the Secretaries of Treasury and Homeland Security, an unprecedented condition not applicable to Texas or Florida. Is it true that Puerto Rico had to wait five months to receive this funding, yes or no? Uh, not exactly, Senator. The, the CDL loan was actually an unprecedented amount of resources being provided that Congress uh, deemed appropriate, they wait making five available months $1.5 billion. Did they dollars. wait five months to get the money? Uh, no, Senator. I actually don't believe that the governor has availed himself of this option yet. Uh, at the same time, it is an unprecedented amount of money that well, is available to that Let me, let me that tell means. you what happened, since you seem to have a different recollection. The administration unjustifiably withheld the loan from Puerto Rico, arguing that it had a cash balance at the end of 2017 and therefore didn't need the money. I'm sure there are cash balances in Texas and Florida. In November of 2017, Puerto Rico Governor Rosario requested $94 billion in discovery recovery funds. In response to this request, how much money did you request from Congress? Senator, the request the administration submitted actually included a, a addendum to the letter that said specifically additional funds would be requested. Uh, can you the, give me the dollar figure? Uh, Senator, it was a specific amount for the disaster relief fund that actually applies to all the disasters. Right. And, uh, and, that, and that amount was Texas, $44 Florida, billion, dollars, was it not? Uh, yes, I believe that's And that correct. was to be split among Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Senator. It was also the third request, and the note was made that there would be an additional. In November 2017's request to Congress, you requested budget cuts to offset aid dollars provided to Puerto Rico. In your extensive disaster management experience, does Congress typically require offsets for supplemental disaster funding? I'm sorry, Senator, does the Congress normally typically require offsets oh, awesome. for supplemental disaster funding? Senator, is, I, I, my role specifically at, at OMB is certainly to make recommendations. These are the requests that the President is making and the, that the, the Office of Management Is the answer yes or no? Does Congress typically require offsets for supplemental disaster funding? It has been you a and I common both know the answer is no. It has been a common conversation in recent years, definitely. But, but again, it's the prerogative of Congress. It's not a common conversation. The answer is no. You should know that. You know that. It's a conversation that, that has been had, Senator, and I, I appreciate your perspective on Did it. Did you? Amazing. Did you advocate for unprecedented policies? that would have conditioned Puerto Rico's receipt of disaster relief funding for, on the oversight of the island's unelected and unaccountable control board. Senator, as I noted earlier in other discussions, I'm, I don't think it's appropriate to characterize my advice. You do see what the request was that the administration uh, provided to the Congress and that Congress considered when Congress In your passed. emails, you actually say that you see a role for the board. Look, you were a significant architect of the Trump administration's response in Puerto Rico, which was at best botched and incompetent. At worst, it reflects the administration's most insidious views about Hispanic Americans. 
Three and a half million American citizens who just happen to call Puerto Rico their home, but they're American citizens like you and I are, face their darkest hour, and instead of turning to help them, you pinch pennies. And worst of all, I think you treated them like second-class citizens. That does not give me the faith that when you're going to have to stand up for seniors, service members, students, homeowners against some of the biggest financial institutions in this country, that you'll do that. If you couldn't do it for the people of Puerto Rico, I don't know how you're going to do it for anybody else. And they are U.S. citizens, Ms. Kreininger.